President, members of Council, <laughs> I'm joined by Mr Robertson this morning. Uh, we have three items on the agenda. The first is the discussion of potential introduction of an ordinance related to a master plan zone. And Council may remember this from the presentation that Mr Robertson and I gave at the December 13th of last year County Council meeting. We, we don't propose to repeat that presentation for you, but I, I can yield to Mr Robertson to provide some, some updates on the progress that we've made since that presentation. So, you, you scare me when you said there's three items, and I realized that one of those is the rollout of the digital stuff, which I don't have anything to do with, so for me it's two. Um, so this one, as Mr. Whitehouse said, is the, the um, really the, the official start of the Master Plan Zone Ordinance. We've spent quite a bit of time working on that. We've made presentations to you all, um, so I'm not going to go through what it does. Um, the, the updates, I would say, in our code right now we have an article... 17, there's what's called a vacation retirement residential park district that actually is a closed district, so nobody could rezone to that now, and we don't have any of those districts anywhere in the county. So we thought this would be, um, using the Sam Wilson rule, we'd take out something and put something in. So we deleted that chapter or that article, um, not the chapter, that article in its entirety and plugged this in, and it actually fit pretty well in its place. Um, so. It's the same as uh, what we mentioned to you uh, in previous presentations. One thing that I don't know that, that we specifically went over, because um, it was a, a, a later clarification and sort of a placeholder that we had had, was that we did want to further the conversation about affordable housing uh, through this uh, program. Uh, and so uh, one of the requirements for an MPZ is that 20% of all multifamily dwellings uh, shall be set aside as SCRP units governed by Chapter 72, so that if you're going to utilize this program, um, that you do have to provide an affordable housing element within it. Um, you know, again, there's a lot in here. What we'd like to do is get this ordinance introduced so that we can start the conversation, get good feedback make any improvements, changes, et cetera, that we need to do. It does need to go through PLUS, right. um, so we will do that. And unless there's any questions, what I'd like to do is read the short title and get it introduced. I have a question. Sure. Uh, line 447 says that the, the, sh the plan shall in include a master transportation plan approved by DelDOT. Does that give DelDOT the authority to shut this down? No, what we were looking for with that is um, actually to avoid DelDOT shutting it down. Um, and, you know, because if we're going to have roadways within the master plan that are going to be state maintained at some point, you know, we don't want to have those built first and then every time you do a little neighborhood off that street, you've got to get another entrance permit. Um, you know, which that would be death by a thousand cuts. So the idea with that is to make it so that DelDOT signs off on the whole thing all at once. Um, you know, just like they would do now with an entrance permit or an entrance plan, but they do it for the whole development. Well, I'm all for DelDOT approving this, but it just seems, I mean, I'm not an attorney, but does, does that not give them the opportunity if they decide to be unreasonable to just blow the whole thing up? It, it would give them some oversight yeah. on the safety of the roads, the curves, the angles, where the entrances are. There's a word some, shall in there, but I'm yeah. just something to think yeah, about. Yeah, and that may be something that we change. I, I, Mr. Schaefer, that's a good point and one that we need to keep in mind, but I, I'd like to get it introduced today, yeah, but yeah, keep fine. that in mind. Yeah, and, and it may be the changing the word shall to may or, or changing the reference to approval by DelDOT so that DelDOT doesn't have veto power over this. No, that's a good point. So, Why don't you read the short title? I will do that. And this one is actually fairly short compared to some. It is. It is. It is. <laughs> it's a big program in a short title. Oh, yeah, right. I wasn't going to read it wrong. Um, an ordinance to delete Chapter 115, Article um, 17, Vacation, Retirement, Residential Park District, Sections 115-132 through 115-140 in its entirety, and to insert Article 17, Master Plan Zone, Section 115-132 through 115-140 in its place. Am I going to introduce it? I'll introduce it. Mr. Hutz, introduce it. Next. Okay, then well, go ahead if you want to. Or... Uh, I'll provide a short summary, and then again, Mr. Robertson can explain. So, so this is a discussion and potential introduction of a proposed ordinance related to solar farm conditional uses. And again, I can yield to Mr. Robertson to explain this to you. This is a real simple one also. Um, as you know, and you're maybe seeing, we've had a, a, quite a bit of solar farm applications come through, um, planning and zoning, I think. 
some are still on their way to you after going through planning and zoning. What planning and zoning and staff uh, and I talked about is basically just codifying the conditions that we have been imposing on those. There's a standard set of conditions, and, and rather than just reinvent the wheel each time that we have an application, make them all the same. Um, and there is, uh, a, you know, sort of a basis for doing that. We, we have the same thing for borrow pits. If you look in the code uh, now, there's a standard set of conditions for borrow pits. This actually borrowed uh, from some of those standard conditions, including ones that we put on solar farms. Um, so, uh, you know, just to go over it, it includes specific separation distances from roads and property lines from dwellings of other ownership, um, from uh, signage, uh, signage including a, identification of the operator of the, of the use um, and contact information in case of uh, emergency, fencing that's secured, and also a decommissioning plan. So when the whole thing goes away, there's some plan for, uh, you know, what's going to be in place to return that property to farmland or, you know, uh, undeveloped land, basically pull out the solar panels that are no longer in use. Um, you know, we've had some folks in the industry review that up to this point, review this proposed ordinance, and they've uh, given it a general thumbs up. Obviously, we'd like to take it through the hearing process um, and see where it goes. I would say I'd be surprised if there's a lot of material objection to it because, again, it does mirror what the commission and you all have been imposing anyway on these. And it doesn't um, stop the council from imposing additional conditions. No, that's if correct. They choose to. That's correct. Or, or that's PNCs. Correct. Yes, that, that is absolutely correct. And it doesn't, you know, because it does. Um, so it is in line with the approvals that have been placed already or have been approved. It's not something that we see in any way that, um, you know, <clears throat> creates additional unnecessary hurdles for solar, sure. Uh, sure. you know, generation uh, in Sussex County. Okay. We did not put a provision for bonding in there. It's um, it's more general than that because uh, you know there's just multiple different ways of doing it. The main thing is we want we require that there be a decommissioning plan that includes a financial security sufficient to ensure that funds are available for the de decommissioning and removal. The reason we said that, and it may be that an applicant propose a bond, proposes a bond, it may be that it's dealt with contractually between the landowner and the, the solar operator. We wanted to give some flexibility um, in that. I mean, we could, you know, as it goes through the public hearing process, we can definitely add a bond um, if council desires. Um, so, and that would be maintained probably by your officer or Correct. somebody in engineering. Would you uh, read the short title? I will certainly do that. An ordinance to amend the Code of Sussex County, Chapter 115, Article 24, and that's in Roman numeral, Section 115-172, and Article 25, again in Roman numerals, Section 115-194.5, to add provisions for special requirements for solar farm conditional uses. Anybody want to introduce it? Yes. Mr. Schaefer introduces it. Okay. Thank you. And, and just go going forward, I, I would imagine you all will see the solar one before you see the master plan one, because that's we're going to wait and see what we get back from PLUS on that. Um, it'll go through planning and zoning. I don't know that we'll schedule the hearing at council before we get it all done at planning and zoning, just because we don't know how long that process will sure. take, depending on what input we get. Have a guesstimate of how long that might take? Solar so. ordinance, we can move forward to council by April time, so so relatively quickly. Uh, the MPZ <coughs> ordinance, we will not receive plus comments back until middle of March. That being said, we can start to think about timetabling yeah. perhaps in March in anticipation of those comments. So. Yeah. And in the meantime, the solar one, that won't impact anybody who wishes to apply for solar. Well, thank you both very much, and I guess I guess now, Mr. Whitehouse, you could sit down <laughs> and Mr. Robert explain to us the new document management software. That will be a very short piece.